Andreas, your guitar sage here, and today, well, we're live. We're live on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, and I'm going to be getting to your questions straight away after a short little anecdote here today. I'm going to be talking to you about my first student with perfect pitch. A lot of people talking about perfect pitch, and oh, they want it so bad because they know that it's just going to make them a much better musician. Ah, but wait, wait, wait till I tell you these stories, or this story, okay, and some bits about perfect pitch so you can understand it more to see truly if it's something that you need, okay? We've got a, another giveaway today, friends. Lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365 plus... These three books, that's right. You know us, we love giving stuff away. You guys give to us, we give to you. Uh, guitars, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, courses, and we just have so much fun. So here's the deal, this is how to win this. Are you ready? These three books from me and a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365, here it goes. It's really important that you listen because folks are gonna get lost on this. Number one, you need an Instagram. If you don't have one, you can get them, they're free. And here's how it's gonna go. There's a post that I recently posted on Instagram. It looks a little bit like this. Chris. It looks a little bit like this post right here. This guy right here, okay? That is the post that you'll need to go to Instagram and look at, and here are four things that you need to do. Oh my God, that's so many, Eric. It's so easy. It's the only four things you can do on Instagram. You see that little heart there, that little red heart? You click on that, okay, number one, you click on it. You've gotta be following me, okay, so in the upper left hand, or there's a little follow button basically if you're not following me, which you probably are already. If you're not, search your guitar stage, right? So you're gonna like it, you're gonna follow it, leave a comment, super easy, chit chit chat, right? And number four, here's the, here's the number four, is you must share it in your stories. Eric, I don't know how to do that. I know, that's why I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Do you see that little paper airplane that has a circle around it and a big arrow pointing to it? That's the button you'll press. Now, here's the deal. It will only appear on your phone. It's not gonna appear on a tablet or a, it definitely won't appear on the computer. It may appear on the tablet, but I don't think so. I think it's just on the phone. Nonetheless, only on the phone. It's the paper airplane, it's the one circled. Don't complicate it, right? Click that button. After you click that button, you're gonna see this little thing here, and it's a picture of your mug. That mug right there is Mike, our designer, who's a beast. 
and uh, he created these for us. So thank you, Mike. So click on that button, the one with the arrow and the big circle around it. You click on that, and after that, this screen appears, and in the bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see your beautiful face again, With but you won't see it with the circle or the arrow. None of these are, that's just to show you where to go. But your beautiful face will be there. Click on that, and basically you will share this post to friends. And by doing that, you're letting more people know what's going on. People say, well, Eric, why do you do that? Because we need to let people know. There's a reason that you're watching this, right? And just like a bird or an animal who finds food, they let other the other birds, the other animals know because that's the cool thing to do, right? Sharing is caring. So please do that. If you love sharing and if you just like receiving then do that as well because it's your opportunity to win an over $500 value almost a $600 value when it's all said and done with the books and the shipping and everything else that we're going to be doing okay uh, and we do that we did one uh, this morning we announced one and we're going to announce another one tomorrow morning on Instagram stories now if you hate Instagram it's okay because Facebook we're going to be doing that next week okay we like to change it up keep you on your toes and because not everybody has a specific you know some people hate Facebook some people love Instagram yada 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 so we, we're trying to change it up all the time cool make sense okay excellent so without further ado here we go I'm going to talk to you about um, my first student with perfect pitch so many of you know that before or even during at the time actually where I was teaching on YouTube. I was also teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons. So I've taught one-on-one -on -one lessons since I was in high school many, m many years ago, many decades ago. Yes, 30-something decades or 30-something years ago. Dear Lord, decades. 30-something years ago. So it's been a long time and stack that up. How many how many weeks, how many years, how many students per day I've taught? I've easily taught, I don't know, tens of thousands of lessons, okay? And with that, with teaching at least hundreds of guitar players, maybe even maybe even closer to a thousand, I don't know now. It's been a long time. Um, but you run into different types of people. And you run into the child stars where the moms bring them in, the momagers, and they're like, my child is so special and they are going to change the world and everything else and you're like okay let's see let's see what we got you know and there's that whole bit and then you have everywhere in between well one of these students that came in was this student who supposedly had perfect pitch i was skeptical as i am with most things i, I want to check it out and make sure i'm not just buying something because it was said to me or because some mom might think that their child is special not that that's ever happened in the world right every kid is special so this child also had autism, so I started listening because my understanding is if you have autism, there's some different ways that one's brain works, okay? And a lot of times, people who are autistic, they can focus on one specific thing, whereas other things scatter them. So I was open, and first day I brought him in, and I turned the guitar away from him, and I played a note. I said, what note is that? And he said, oh, it's a B-flat. Okay, what's note is this? Oh, it's a G sharp. What note is this? And he was able to do it with every single note. Or I, I, obviously after like two or three notes, I'm like the kid has perfect pitch. So first off, what is perfect per perfect pitch? Perfect pitch is when one can tell you the name of a note. Basically, if I do this, here's how to tell it. Do you have perfect pitch? You ready? Let's get a different patch here. Do you have perfect pitch? <laughs> Right there, so if someone has perfect pitch, they know immediately what the name of that note is. There's no like, well, I kind of have it. It's like they know it immediately. Okay, it's a G. Ooh, I have perfect pitch. No, I'm looking at the fretboard, right? I don't have perfect pitch. So um, if I pluck this note right here. Okay, now some of you might be able to go, well, his hand's in that general location and he fretted something, okay? Well, what about this note? Ah, it wasn't an A sharp, it was an A. So nonetheless, perfect pitch will allow one to automatically hear something and automatically know the name of the note. They're also able to, if I were to just play a chord like this, just something with lots of different notes in it, they would be able to identify every single note in there and be able to name it. 
could, could have 12 notes in it and folks with perfect pitch are able to do that. Wow, that's really impressive, isn't it? It sure is, if that's what music was, okay? Now, I have known probably at least five people in my life that had perfect pitch. A couple of them became studio musicians and become really mastered, masterful, whatever you want to say, uh, studio musicians. Uh, one of those, uh, God, the name just escaped me, but maybe it'll come back to me. Um, piano player, blind, here in studio, white guy. Um, oh, God. Uh, Moat, Moat, Moat. Gordon Moat. Gordon Moat. I went to school with him, actually did some studio bits with him in, in Nashville. And uh, fantastic player. And you could just hit, you could take your hand and put it on the on the uh, piano like this, just smash all the keys down. He'd be able to name every single note that's being played. He could just hear them. So there's that. There's the musician who has perfect pitch and then does something with it. And he is remarkable. And then there was my student who took lessons from me for a few years and he was kind of scattered and he didn't practice like he should, but yet he had perfect pitch. So here's the deal. There's other musicians that I know, 99% or more, that don't have perfect pitch, that are absolutely off the chart, insane musicians, okay? So Eric, what the hell are you saying here? What I'm saying is, perfect pitch is not necessarily going to make you a better musician. So if you're striving to have perfect pitch and taking courses or whatever, first off, let me save you some money because my understanding from a, from somebody who studies this and from somebody who has a child who has perfect pitch, uh, there's a guy on YouTube that I listen to a lot and he says that it can be developed as a child, but as an adult, it cannot. Now, with that being said, I know there's some people that are going to argue that when they're probably arguing relative pitch, and I'll talk about that in a moment. There's perfect pitch and there's relative pitch. Um, I don't know for sure if you are an adult who has developed perfect pitch. I would love to hear from you, but I'm, but not, but I would have to test you because I'm not going to just go on your word because there's more people believe believe they have perfect pitch when in fact they have relative pitch. This happens all the time. So, and it's always from somebody who says, no, it's perfect pitch, promise you. And it turns out to be relative pitch every single time. Well, except for my, my, my student there, right? So, perfect pitch in and of itself will not make you a better musician. And again, 99.9% .9 of the mus musicians that I know that are absolutely amazing do not have perfect pitch. And just because you have perfect pitch like my student doesn't mean anything in regards to being a good musician or not. Okay. However, relative pitch, which is something that we can all develop, and it has less to do with hearing. I had a video that went out just, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago that basically said ear training is 80% to do with music theory and the knowledge, seeing the patterns and what have you, which is not, we're not talking like some a beautiful mind type of thing where you have to see things in the air and it becomes all magical. It's just stuff you learn that any ho-hum dude can learn, okay? You can learn this stuff. It's just basic stuff. But essentially what you're doing is you're hearing something, the same thing that you heard as a baby, but now it means something to you, okay? Think about talking to a child, right? Talking to a baby. You're talking, talking, talking. They're hearing the same things as they're hearing when they're an adult, right? Are you speaking any differently? No. Are you speaking with a different accent? No. But what happens is their understanding of those sounds that you're making changes from zero to one to three to five to ten. Now they can understand those words because they're being taught those words. In the same exact way, you can develop your ear to become magical, if you will, to be able to identify chords and scales and notes and be able to pick things up, play the songs right away. Here in Nashville, it's nothing for a real seasoned studio player to step on stage, have never heard a song before, and be able to play the song. What? How can that be, Eric? Because I'm telling you, if you listen, if you watch my videos, if you get in the free course, you are going to understand that there are patterns, just like the fingerprint in your hand, in your fingers, but way less complicated. Very, very, very simple stuff. And if you understand that simple stuff to a, to a really good degree, okay, it's simple, but you really have to understand the simple stuff. 
Once you do understand that, then all of this stuff will be revealed to you. It's just basic stuff. Ask any Nashville musician. It's basic. It's the number system, one through seven. That's it, okay? So without, uh, so all that to say, develop your ear, and that can be done through lots of stuff, through taking lessons, through evaluating what it is that you're doing, finding out the key to a song. I've got a video coming out for that shortly. Like, what is the key of, what is the, what does that mean? To be in the key of something. You know, people are like, oh, it's the key. It's what you're in, okay? But what does that mean? What does that mean to the notes? What does that mean to the chords? It means a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Or I should say, it doesn't mean a whole bunch of stuff, but it means some stuff that is very meaningful. And if you don't know the meaning, just like that child not knowing the meaning behind the words that are being said, then of course you're going to be lost, okay? But you got to know the language. Just like my example all the time, if I want to know Mandarin, okay, I need to grow up in Mandaria, right? I need to grow up in China so that I can know how to speak Mandarin, okay? Just like I'm, I'm English or I'm American, so I know how to speak English, okay? So, uh, does that explain relative and perfect pitch? It should. So, don't be so worried about having perfect pitch, but definitely be concerned with developing your ear and having relative pitch, okay? And when I say 80% has to do with music theory, it's more like 90%, but I didn't want to polarize people too much because people have a hard time believing new concepts because of their paradigm because of their model of what they've believed their whole life. And because of that, I don't want to, um, I don't want to make things too hard, but at the same time, it's really more like 90%, possibly even higher than that. So Eric, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying this, I'm saying that if I'm playing this scale and I say to you, well, what scale is that? And some people say immediately A minor. Some people say, well, gosh, how I don't know. How would I know? Some people would look at my fingers and they'd say, well, I know that's the flat of third, so, and I know the pattern of a minor scale, so that's the minor scale. So there's like four different ways there, right? Some, somebody's going to say, I don't know. Someone's, someone's going to use their ear. Someone else is going to use a pattern. So there's so many different ways to do it, but bottom line, it comes back, it comes down to theory, okay? If I don't know what the scale form is, I'm not going to know it. Eventually, it starts sinking into your ears, just like when you're a child, one word's going to sound the same as another, but as you start understanding the different distinctions between T and P, right? A child may not get that at first, but later on as you develop, you get more mature, you do get that, and now everything starts making sense. But it won't make any sense unless you're leaning into it, unless you're challenging yourself, you're challenging your ear, okay? All right, how do you do that? People want a specific straight way to do that? Just get involved with music, really. That's the easiest and the most fun way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to make it really sterile, okay? Uh, there's there's several different ways you can develop your ear, but I promise you just getting involved with music, learning songs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is going to make it way more uh, enjoyable and you're going to be doing everything that you need to do to develop your ear. Cool? Okay, excellent. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into some questions. What's up, Tom, Bonnie? This is all on Facebook, by the way. And I'm only looking for those with a question mark. Ken, Gary, what's up? Hey, anyone ever won anything on this site? Gary's asking, has anyone ever won anything on this site? If you've won anything in Facebook, if you're on Facebook, let Gary know if you've won or not because he wants to make sure that I'm not a charlatan and that I'm just saying that I'm giving stuff away when I ain't, okay? But Gary, I can assure you, we give away, no joke, over a half a million dollars worth of goodies away every single year to charities, to veterans, to winners like you, Gary, because you look like a winner. You got a winner hat on with a winner smile and we give away tons of stuff, okay? So here you go. All right, I'm only look, looking for those with a question mark. What can I learn today? Christopher, you're gonna be learning lots of stuff if you're listening, uh, namely, all about perfect pitch and um, relative pitch and then all the questions that pop up. Uh, Tom won a lifetime membership and some books. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Gary. Very kind of you. Snowy in uh, Charlottesville. We're in Nashville, of course, and boy, oh boy, it is raining like mad out there and it's just going to continue. 
All right. Looks like my guitar. What is that song? So Christopher, the song that I was playing before is just something I was making up, just something I was noodling with. The chords were uh, A minor, G, F, E. And if you look at my foot pedal setup here, what I've got going on is basically when I hold a chord, when I play a chord, and then I hit this button, it basically holds the chord for me. It just sits there and rotates it. It's something that I've programmed. So if I just play something right now, you got this long delay. But if I hold this button down, now I don't have the delay and I just have some reverb. It's not as messy. But I can hold the chord, so I play the chord. And now, I've got my guitar muted, turned down the whole nine yards, and it just sits there and does that. Well, it's an A minor chord that's playing, so now I can. And then if I hold it again, I press another chord. That's how I'm doing that, and the chords are A minor, G, F, and E major. Okay, if you want to kind of have some fun with that chord progression, you can set up your looper and do the same thing, okay? And the scale that you would use for that would be A minor, uh, you could use some A Dorian over that, A pentatonic, A blues. Uh, when that E chord comes up, E major, you could use the... I'm sorry, that note right there, because that note is the third, the major third of the E chord, which is normally not in that chord progression, cool? All right, so he didn't ask me about all that, but I figured I would explain that just because I know other people probably ask it about that. Okay, uh, sounds kind of Pink Floydish, indeed. Yeah, it's definitely kind of Floydish, definitely inspired by that, right? Okay, so Roddy was saying, I was in the Country Hall of Fame last week. That indoor waterfall is the holy water. I splashed some on my face just in case it was. That's amazing, Roddy. Um, is it bad that I can't identify the pitch? I know when it's minor or sharp, but not the note. Roddy, no, and this is what I'm telling you. Listen, you're going to learn from other people asking questions in, in here. Do you know why? Because your thoughts are typically not your thoughts. They're thoughts that have been going on for eternity that are out there in the ether and they land on you and then you think them, okay? Just because they're you, they're your thoughts, doesn't mean they're your thoughts. just means they're in your head. Um, that goes with negative thoughts and stuff as well. Just get them out of your head. But in this case here, when you think that you're not something... You think that you're you're belittling yourself with a thought. Don't do that, and it's not you. It's other people as well. We all just have these thoughts of inadequacy sometimes, okay? Until we can train our mind not to do that. But in this case here, Roddy's saying, is that bad that I'm not like that, that I can't identify the note? Nope, and here's the deal. You could take Stevie Ray Vaughan. You could take... Um, not Stevie Wonder, because I think he has perfect pitch. You could take Eddie Van Halen. You could take uh, Jimmy Page. Take some of the best musicians in the world and I could just play a note and say, what is that note, Stevie? You're such an amazing guitar player. And they wouldn't have any idea what that note is, okay? They might have an idea because of relative pitch, but that's all. And relative pitch is different than perfect pitch. Perfect pitch, every single time they get the note right and it has some other, it's, uh, some other mechanism. It's not relative pitch. Relative pitch is when we relate things to other things. Okay, so if I do this, and I didn't even look at my guitar, but how do I know that that note is an E? Well, I know it because I hit the lowest string. So I'm relating what I know, which is that's the lowest string. And so of course it's an E, right? And I could do this, and I know it's an A, not because I have perfect pitch, but because it's the next string down. Make sense? So we're always using some sort of relationship. But, but perfect pitch is when I do this, 
hit this note, and automatically I can name it. I can't name that note, can you? If so, you have perfect pitch. Okay? So no, it's not bad, Roddy. It's, that is most folks, okay? What's pitch, Sage? Pitch is, pitch is the frequency of a note. So everything vibrates. Everything in the universe vibrates. A rock vibrates. It does, not very, not very quickly, but it vibrates. Everything's vibrating at some sort of frequency, okay? Frequency is how fast something vibrates, okay? This note right here is an A, an open A, and I believe that's 110. Vibrates at 110, okay? Maybe 220. I think it's 110. Nonetheless, it's vibrating, okay? And so if I go up in pitch, as we go up in pitch and go higher and higher and higher and higher, what's happening is it's vibrating faster and faster as we go down very low. You can actually hear the you can actually hear the the frequency lowering. Okay, you can uh, like a fan moving very slowly. Do, 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 right. So that's what pitch is. It's the frequency or how how fast something's vibrating. Very easy to notice on a string because you can physically look at it shaking. If you go to the higher strings and you pick it, you won't even see it shaking very much. But the lower ones, you can physically see it vibrating. Cool. That's pitch. Picking up. Uh, picking up delivers a brighter tone than picking down. I believe that is that is desired so you can get additional tone out of some out of the same note. Is that something we should embrace and highlight during practice, Larry? Yeah, up and down picks. Yeah, different. You get different bits from it. You know. I won some new guitar skills. Alex saying, yeah. Uh, Jude saying, I won an ebook bundle. Indeed, I promise you, we're really giving away stuff. How do I win that guitar? This one? Ooh, it's gonna be a while before we, before I give that one away. That's a 1965, and it's not going anywhere soon. In fact, I just got it back from the shop. I'm in Waynesboro. How much snow? So is relative pitch where you can play an E and then and tell them it's E and play an A and ask what that note is. They say an A. Kind of, kind of, Ted. Yes. Or it would be like this. If I say this is relative pitch. If somebody says, Eric, can you? Can you hum an E? I would go, bum, 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 because I have this note to start from, right? If I didn't have that note, I wouldn't know where to start, but I've got this note, so this is relative pitch. I can go, bum, 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 so that means this should be an E, and I'm right on it, right? That's relative pitch, because I used a couple things that I know. I know the sound of the major scale. I learned it. That means you can learn it, okay? Uh, trust me, if I learned it, you can learn it, okay? I'm not belittling myself, I'm just, just trust me, you can do it, okay? So I used two things there. I used the starting pitch, I needed that, because I don't have perfect pitch, so I started with that, and then I just hummed up the scale. Da 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 da, one, two, three, four, five, easy, right? So yes, Ted, that's what it is. That's a great practice right there. People are like, how can I develop my ear? Do that right there. Name the note, say, Okay, here's a note. You don't even have to know the name of the note. And say, name the six. Name the six of this scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Easy enough. It's easy to do. Anybody can do this. You can. But you gotta, you gotta get used to it. You, know, you play the note, try the two first. What is the major scale, Eric? I don't know, I'm lost because you haven't taken advantage of the free course, the free course that I have for you, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. The link for that is in the description of the video or it's right here. So go there, go through those first 30 lessons. They're not free because they're not worth anything. They're free because I'm just, I give stuff away. First 30 lessons, my goodness, if you are listening to me and you've heard me say this more than once, you're doing yourself an injustice by doing things some other way. Go step by step, you'll get it, okay? That's the only way to scale a mountain. Just started playing the guitar. How do you help your fingers get over soreness? Uh, I never did. I never 
um, did anything specifically to get over soreness, I would just lay off for a few minutes and then I'd go back to it. Also lighten up your touch, Marsha. So don't press down so hard. You'll notice that you just need to play hard enough to actually fret the note, but anything more than that is just wasted energy and it's gonna make your fingers hurt more, okay? Love your tips on YouTube. Thank you so much, Marsha. Uh, yeah, so just go lighter on that. I've heard that apple cider vinegar is helpful. I can't say for sure. I drink apple cider vinegar all day long, so I know it's a healer of all sorts of things, but I don't, I've never really, I've used it one time on my fingertips, uh, but I've, I can't say that I've noticed anything specific, you know. Uh, Christopher Patterson, what is the pedal that I'm using? So the pedal that I'm using, this is a Kemper. This is uh, part of my Kemper amp, okay? And so basically it works like this. This is my, this is like a wah. And here I have a volume pedal, right? And then I have different patches here. So like this one may, this is more like a rock and roll. These are things that I've programmed, you know? This would be kind of an Eddie sound, but it's not gonna sound like Eddie Van Halen through a Strat. And then I got clean tones. And I got things like this. You know, then I got things like a... Got some delays and stuff like that going on. So this is all stuff that I've programmed into my Kemper amp. That's the name of the, the, the amplifier. It has all the effects built into it. But there's so many different ways that we can do this, right? We've got individual pedals and, and all sorts, okay? Um, now the pedal that holds the chord like that, again, that is something that is built into this device here, and it's called Infinity, or it's called Freeze. It's called uh, Delay Freeze. So if I hit a chord and then I do that, then it'll do that. I'm sure there are pedals on the market that you could just buy that will do that as well, you know? Thank you, Jim. Outstanding program. The journey is amazing. Thank you, Eric. Um, thank you, Ryan. So, so kind of you. He's a top fan as well on Facebook. Pretty cool. When do you do giveaways? All the time, Arno. Uh, do you ship outside the U.S. too? We have, for sure, uh, to Finland to be specific. Uh, not We haven't shipped to Finland specifically, but we have shipped outside the country before. And obviously, uh, a lot of the stuff we do is electronic, so that's easy shipment, right? That's through the email. Okay. Cool. Cool. Selfish question here. What if I just finally got the Instagram thing going and I don't have any friends on there? That doesn't matter. I believe I shared it on my story. Is that enough for the entry in the contest? Indeed, Ryan. Yep, it definitely is. You, that is just sharing it. That's all, okay? If I know the key, I can tell what chord is, is playing, but I have trouble with notes for the scale of the key. I guess practice, indeed, it's always practice. And if you know what chord's being played, Jude, that means you're developing your relative pitch. Uh, but if you do this thing that I showed you, this one right here where you're just like, and then you say, okay, what's the seven? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Easy enough, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how to do it. If you wanna get better at your scales, that's all you need to do. Throw a number out there, press one note, and then play through the scale. But Eric, I don't know the major scale. I know you don't. And if you don't, it's because you haven't gone through the free course. I'm telling you, all this stuff that I'm giving you is absolutely monumental, stuff that you really need to know, okay? Man, lots of questions over on, on Facebook today. Um, <clears throat> Okay, if Gibson and Fender have a baby, what's the name? Answer, Les Stratty. Nice, nice, Larry. Um, okay, Christopher took the free course. Beautiful. Eric, I find when I learn a song, I cannot, I cannot sing while I play it. I can sing and play separately, but not together. Any ideas? John, yes. 
for the same reason that you may be able to juggle two balls but not three balls or three balls and not four balls. It's because it's more things going on. Your brain has to keep it has to keep up with all these different things and the only way for you to get that is to practice it just like juggling if you can't do three it's not because you weren't born not being able to do three although that's true too you weren't born not being able to do three is that you must practice it okay um i have videos for this too uh, on youtube just search your guitar sage sing and play Okay, I've got videos for that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I have a whole series for how to break this down. But essentially, John, I can give you a pointer here. Instead of strumming the chords, just play the chord, sing your part, strum the next chord, sing that part, and start there. Okay, what's happening is your brain's getting overloaded. It knows when you're doing it wrong, so it wants you to do it right, but yet you haven't practiced enough to get to that part. But you know, you gotta do it step by step. You can't look at a mountain and see, I just wanna get to the top and just jump up and get to the top. At least I don't know of anybody that could do that yet. It's probably possible, I believe it is. But for right now, we gotta go step by step, okay? So go step by step. And if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, search in the upper left-hand corner, search Sing, and you're going to get that whole course that's going to walk you through it, okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay, where where in a 12-bar blues would you use a 9 chord to bring a jazzy feel? When would you use a 9 chord? Well, technically, Al, you can use... 7th chords and ninth chords and 11th chords and 13th chords, all those chords, you could use them all over the place. Uh, because really they're just extensions of current scale, of the current chord. So we stack harmonies by skipping intervals. So instead of going 1, 2, 3, we'll go 1, 3, 5. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Okay, that's how we stack chords. So technically you can throw a 9 in there anytime. Okay. Your ear may not love it, but that's that sound, that kind of jazzy sound, okay? Eric, do you feel the finger stretches that, that you can find on YouTube will benefit my playing in a major way? Bobby, no, I don't. I think that stretching exercises are helpful. When we say stretching, what we really mean is we mean coordination and dexterity. I have exercises called stretch exercises, but they don't really truly stretch your hand, but our mind is thinking stretch, right? So that's what we're... That's a better idea, it's a better word to use than dexterity because people are wanting a stretch, they're wanting to reach further. So that's what we all use that word stretch, right? But bottom line, it's not gonna make you a better player, but it may allow you to reach further, okay? Make sense? Uh, but being able to play the right notes is more important than being able to stretch. So I always emphasize that sort of thing, you know? Do you have a course on beginner soloing? Gary, I do. It's inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. If to get a feel for that, start at the free course. The link for that's at the, at the, in the description of this video, uh, right at the top of this chat if you're in Facebook, okay? And, on, and in YouTube, it's the same thing. It's in the description of the video. But yes, indeed, I do have that. Uh, for a little taste of that, to get an idea, Gary, on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage minimalistic blues your guitar sage minimalistic blues and you'll find what i'm talking about okay okay uh help i can no longer access ugs private facebook group i just sent email to support jim that's what to do send an email to support and number two we're going to be we're going to have a new way to access the the UGS private group. It's going to be new. It's not going to be Facebook. We're doing something even better, okay? So so I would say don't worry about it, Jim, cuz shortly we're going to be making an announcement, okay? Okay, great. Great questions today on Facebook. You guys are alive. Okay, here we go. I'm jumping over to YouTube because um wow. There's a couple kids out there that have new keyboards. They are just getting crazy with the same messages over and over again. Okay, I'm going to wait till there's a lot of action on YouTube right now. So, here's the deal. So, you're not coming off as a douche and you're being cool to everybody else. Don't do that, okay? Because it makes you look kind of douchey. Sorry, just being honest. I'm, uh, I'm not one of those people that spare feelings, okay? I like to be honest. Cut to the chase. 
cut the shit out, right? Okay, so let's uh, so let's get to it. Let's get to some questions. Please leave a question mark after your question because if you don't, I'm not gonna see it's a question, okay? And if you're addressing somebody else, put at in their name, so this way I'm not reading the question. Otherwise, I won't be able to read your questions when your question comes up if everybody's doing that other bit, right? Cool. All right, here we go. What's the address again for your free lessons? Pete is saying, Pete, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's just my website slash 30. Uh, thank you, David, for posting that. Or it's in the, the description of the video. Just click on that link, okay? That's where to go. As far as calluses are concerned, how do you know you have good calluses and not overdoing it? Uh, Talak, don't worry. You're not going to overdo it. Don't even worry about this subject. If, it, if your fingers hurt, you probably don't have enough calluses. I've never met a person with too, many, with too much calluses. Uh, why not use a back and track? Ted is saying. Ted, do you mean a backing track? I use backing tracks all the time. I love them. And you can do that. Sure. I do it all the time. Why not do things differently too? You know, be diverse. How to make chords from a scale. Okay, so that can be done. And I teach that real extensively inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. But that is a very long question. That's a two-hour answer. So I won't be able to answer that. But essentially, I'll give you one bit here that probably isn't going to help you too much because you're going to need more knowledge. Also, you're probably going to need the beginner series here that I'm giving you for free. But if you were to play the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right? If you take one, three, and five, you'll get one chord. And if you take the two, four, six, you get another chord. And if you take the the three, five, seven, you'll get another uh, chord. And if you take the the four, six, eight, you get another chord. And you get all your chords. And they go like this, according to the diatonic, the major scale, they go major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Okay, major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven. If you want to know what that is in the minor scale, then just start on the six. So then it would be your six is your is your tonal center. You're in a minor key, and then it would be uh, minor diminished major minor minor major major. Okay, I know that's pretty quick, but you can always rewind this and write it down, or uh, obviously start in the free course, and I teach all this in detail inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I have some videos for this on YouTube that I, I mean, in all my stuff, I'm talking about this. So if you just are watching videos from me, you're gonna get inundated with this stuff, okay? You're gonna understand it over time, okay? Okay, is it better to begin on acoustic or electric? Neither is better, it just depends on what makes you happier. What makes you pick up the guitar more? That's your answer. If electric, then pick up the electric more. Hey, could you do a Blink 182? Hey, Eric, do you like Blink-182? I love Blink, yes. Could you do a song tutorial? I need to, because I love that band. And I, I'm sure I've done something by them. Uh, on YouTube, just search Your Guitar Sage Blink. Otherwise, yeah, I need to, because I love those guys. I have a Silvertone, it's a 58 model electric, but had new strings put and hurt to play. So I like playing Les Paul much more, question mark. I don't know what that means, Douglas. Uh, the, what the question mark means, sorry gonna have to get more specific yeah the camera is high today uh, Eric love your view your view of your set on Instagram why is the camera so high I know we need to set it you're chopping off the tip the top of my head isn't it uh, yeah we could talking about oh talking about the way the phone oh sorry okay um, yeah talking about the phone well sorry about that yep it's uh, we'll, we'll reset that for you guys uh, Eric, how much do you use keyboard to interface with your with your DAW? Uh, so a digital audio workstation is what Sam is referring to here, and um, I use it all the time if I am in my DAW. So like shortcuts, anybody who is really good at Pro Tools or any Woo! that frightened me. Oh, <laughs> but that's a good that's a good frightening uh, sound there. Um, hold on. We're going to get to this in just, we're going to get to that answer in just one moment. So Brian, Brian, thank you so much, brother. Brian's been like 
It's like a strip club, and he's just throwing dollars at us. Buddy, thank you so much. I've never been to a strip club, by the way. I just understand that that's truly, I've never been. I really haven't. I just see that in the, you know, the shows and stuff. Uh, Brian, thank you so much, buddy. Super kind of you. We're going to go eat today. I'm feeling much better today, by the way. Can you tell? I'm at like 85, 90%. So I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. Super cool. Uh, so, so yes, here's the deal. If you are really into audio engineering, get used to your keyboard because the shortcuts are all, it's all about shortcuts because it will save you tons of time. And anybody who's really good at that sort of thing is almost always using shortcuts. Either that or they're a, a ninja with their mouse or their, or their pad. But it's all about shortcuts. It'll get you so quickly through whatever it is you're trying to do. Do you dilute the vinegar to drink? Yes, I do. Um, whenever I'm drinking from this thing, it's just water and typically salt. I throw some salt in there and I throw uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, <clears throat> because all, uh, it has to be sea salt or Celtic salt the pink salt because uh, electrolytes gives you a lot of energy. Um, it's good for, for cleansing you, uh, detox. Same thing with apple cider vinegar. They call it the weightlifter's secret because it will shed weight. Um, it helps with all sorts of things, sleep and ton of things. Okay, great. Eric, I'm six and a half months into practicing. I still have issues with switching chords on time and big time, keeping a strum in time. Feel like I should be further. Any advice? Yes, Sean. I know, and you can confirm this, Sean. I know that you're not inside of the free program. If it sounds like I'm, like I'm getting ugly, I am. Sean, get in the free program. Anybody else who's struggling with stuff is because you're not learning things in order or you're expecting too much from yourself without the amount of practice. So I want you to expect a shit ton of stuff from yourself, okay? I want you to think that you are Superman. But I don't want you to think you're Superman and jump off a cliff. I want you to think you're Superman and, and jump up off the ground and move up the scale, okay? It's no, there's no bravery. There's no being a hero or anything cool about thinking that you're some wonderful being without working your arse off, okay? There's nothing cool about that. But something very cool about believing in yourself and thinking that you're awesome and doing the things that it takes to actually bring that about, to bring that to, to fruition, okay? That indeed is cool, okay? Now, Sean, what's happening is you're practicing, you're doing stuff, but you're in your comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I'm surmising here that you're in your comfort zone because if you weren't, the whole switching of the chords thing would be your hyper focus. So what you need to do is this. Sean, you're going to see so much massive results from this. And not just Sean, anybody, listen to me. Whatever your issue is on guitar right now, this is what you need to do. You bump up to the place that you're having the problem. So let's say... Sean's having a problem go for, going from a G to a C. Here's, here's Sean, we're gonna say. Okay, and then he's taking some time and he's measuring his hands and he's measuring his fingers, he's putting his fingers down. It's taking some time to get from chord to chord. Everybody has gone through this. There's nobody who, doesn't, who hadn't gone through this. So, how do you fix it? Well, you fix it because by doing this. You're on the chord that you're on. You think about the next chord, like you're jumping from one rock to the next to cross a river. You're not going to jump up in the air, then search for the rock, right? You look, you know, say, I want that rock, and then you jump, and then you're going to land on it because your brain does all the math to project yourself forward and everything else, okay? So you got to think about the chord before you get to it. You can't lift your finger off and then go, now, what's that chord? Oh, yes, yeah, C. Okay, C is this. People are throwing tomatoes by now, okay? So you need to get your, get your act together. So here you go, you got your chord. You're thinking about C before you're even going to it. So you're thinking, well, what do those fingers look like? So you don't even have to strum, Sean. What you need to do is this. You look at the chord, you're imagining the C in your mind, which finger's gonna go where. You're in, in every way possible, you're imagining what that C should look like. If you have to name the notes, fine. Where the fingertips go, fine. Whatever it looks like, the shape. And then what you do is when it's time to go, you build the chord from the lowest note up, okay? You gotta think one note at a time, and eventually, it will seem like you're moving all fingers at once, but it's just that you're moving them so quickly that it happens immediately. Just like if you shoot a gun, 
the bullet is not getting there immediately. It's getting there so quickly that we say immediately, right? You're not going to be able to move out of the way. But in the same way, mm -hmm. these actions, many actions are happening very quickly, three, four, five, six actions when you're moving from one chord to another. But if you don't build a protocol, right? Just like they teach in the military, you do certain things with a gun or certain things with whatever. You build a protocol, you do it enough, you build a great... <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Who Someone just donated. Brent Boardman, when you're playing rhythm, should you follow the bass or the drums? Um, so I'm going to get back to Sean in just one moment because uh, very kind of you, Brent. Thank you so much. And folks, if you're wondering what's going on, that, that interrupting sound that's so cool, ah, is uh, on, on YouTube, one can donate. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a smiley face and then a donate button, a little money button. That's how folks are doing this. So if you want to donate, it's a great way to do it. And I buy lunch for the boys afterwards. We go out and we eat and we get sloshed and we have a great time. No, we don't do that. We just eat and then we go back to work. Um, so when, um, so Sean, uh, so Brent, when playing rhythm, should you follow the bass or the drums? Brent, technically they both should be on, so you should be able to follow either, but the drum is a much more dynamic instrument, so it's going to be able to push or pull the band more than any other instrument should. If it's a good drummer, the drummer will be able to slow everybody down, because that snare drum, it says this is the beat, and if he's dragging that, then you're going to sound like you're off, even though the drummer's dragging, okay? So technically, both should be on, but listen to the drums, because the drum, and that's if the drummer's in time, okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So, Sean, back to the chords. Uh, go to the free course and do that, because I walk you through this, the transitioning and all the rest, okay? It's very important that you understand this, this concept, okay? Switching the chords, okay? All right, can you show how... Right? Why do people, when they play air guitar, they're like... There's just the face and everything. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get back to that question in just a minute because that is really kind. we got another donation here. Byron Louder, thank you for all you do for the vets. Thank you, Byron. And uh, for all the vets out there and your services, your service, uh, thank you. Uh, because it... We have uh, so much debt f to you. We're indebted to you for all the um, the sacrifice. It's a big deal, and we do not take it lightly. So uh, we love our vets. Uh, yes, apple cider vinegar for ingestion. Yeah, for sure, indigestion. Okay, can you show us how to spice up the minor pentatonic, adding some major scale notes? Yes, so let's do this real quickly. Um, so let me put a little, I'm going to use the, the looper pedal here, right? And uh, where did my daggone pick go? Dear Lord, I lose more picks than someone who loses lots of picks. So here we go. So let's just do a little. So now, um, I've got this little looper in there now, right? So now I'm gonna play, and what I'm gonna do is we will, um, we'll zoom up on this because you're really not gonna need the, uh, the pedal for this really too much. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be playing the, the blues here, right? I'm only gonna stick to the top three strings as well. This is the scale that most folks know is the minor blues scale, right? Right, but we're gonna add Instead, we're going to add a couple notes here that are going to make it major. We're going to add... Okay, we're going to add those notes. And um, we're going to add that note. So here's the major 6, major 2, major 3. And by adding those notes, instead of the pinky here, we're going to take these two guys and these two guys. Really, this guy, because this note is the same as this note. But essentially, these two pinky notes, you could think of as uh, just go a half step down and this guy go a half step up, okay? So essentially, if I go... Um, we're 
we're used to this sound, right? But if I use this note, this note, and this note, I can get some different sounds out of it. Here we go. Playing very elementarily, elementary, elementary. Yeah, I'm playing very elementary um, because I want, I specifically want you to understand that I'm just picking new notes. Now, I could create more love here and more make a sound better, but I want you to. I'm trying to just stick to this one little place here and not get too complicated. So you can see that literally just adding those notes is going to help a lot. So get used to, if you know, if you want to get good at this, unicorn made Frankenstein, which is a epic name. Um, I suggest that you take a major blues. So, you know, take your major blues scale, uh, which is your minor blues scale, but just bump it down. So this is the A. You know that one, right? Or pentatonic, then just take the whole set and move it down and play it like that. Same form, but you're just ending on the pinky now, okay? You can play this note as well, it's in there. But that, get used to doing that over a nice 12 bar blues chord progression uh, in the same key, obviously, and you're gonna hear what I'm talking about. And it, it just makes it sound a lot, uh, it adds something cool, right? Eric, I was thinking that the reason you don't play songs by other artists on live streams, is live streams is copyright infringement, is that right? And thanks for being there for us uh, week after week. <coughs> David, <coughs> pardon me, I get hit with copyright infringements all the time, even with these tracks that we put in the beginning, and it drives me absolutely nuts. With that being said, um, everybody is copyright infringement happy now, so that's why they're nailing me for everything. Um, I shouldn't say that, but it's lately it seems like that, okay? So... That's why we haven't done it lately. Even with the jam tracks that you always hear at the beginning, it's because those are our jam tracks, but people are still claiming them. It's a real pain in the butt. Um, yeah, but that's why. Yes. Can you give some tips on coming up with something original because I can't seem to make something new? Uh, you know, you, I mean, to do that, you, you have to understand music some. So if you don't understand music theory, then you're just going to be grabbing. See, when you say you want something original, this is very original. That's never been done before. Um, why would it be? Because it sounds terrible. So what you mean is you want something that sounds original, but it sounds good. And that's the more important part, okay? And so if you want something that sounds original and good, you have to understand some basics on the construction of music. Otherwise, you're gonna be grabbing chords, and even though they're original, right? You're gonna be like this, you're gonna be like. Why doesn't that sound good? The strum is right, the chords are right. Well, they don't work together because the construction's not right, okay? It's not what we're used to hearing. So what I would say is, Go through the free program, understand how music is built through the major scale, and then you'll be able to do this. You're gonna know what chords work with what chords. That's how to make something original that sounds good, okay? Otherwise, you know, otherwise just start playing, you know, and don't play, if you want something original, don't play what other people have played, but that's not gonna answer what you really want, which is you want it to sound good, okay? But answering your question specifically, don't play what other people play, and you'll be doing you'll be playing original stuff all the time. Uh, need more help switching switching chords and strumming on time, watching old videos and trying the metronome. Any advice? Uh, so Sean, yeah, so I think we addressed this one, right? Uh, Sean, yes, go through the free program. Indeed, that's where it's all um, that's where it's all helping. Musical keyboard? Question mark. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, can you say something about the nut string width? I have fingers, I have, I have big fingers and good form, but I still have problems with deadened strings. Eldon, when someone says that they're, that they have good form, Stevie Ray Vaughan had good form and you have good form. So who's right? Okay. So this is a very subjective matter. So yes, you could get a wider nut for your guitar. So like a classical guitar, you could do that. And I would suggest maybe trying that out and seeing if that's going to help out. And it may be a quick fix, but honestly, Eldon, I know folks with ginormous hands. Uh, Stevie Ray was one. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, I believe, had very large hands. So uh, it didn't seem to stop them. It has to do with practice, and it has to do with, uh, with, with getting good at those sorts of things. So not to pick on you, Eldon, but what we think we've practiced enough for is typically... Um, a paradigm that we have in our head that says, surely that was enough practice and that, you know, we should be good now, right? Um, don't listen to that voice because that voice is lazy and says, you practiced enough, you should be better. Well, if you're not playing better than you want to be, then the answer is very explicit. You haven't practiced enough, okay? But we live in a world where everybody gets their feelings hurt so quickly that you can't say such a thing. Well, not on this channel. We, we, uh, we offend enough, just enough to keep those people out of here. So everybody that's in here, that's in the chat room now on Facebook and YouTube are not those, those, those folks that are so sensitive to all that stuff, okay? And I, and I would guess, Eldon, that you're not like that either. But with that being said, you know, <clears throat> most guitars are pretty, are pretty standard uh, slight differences, nothing to write home about. A Spanish guitar, you know, a classical guitar is going to be wider and those will help. But it's not necessarily what you're looking for. Try it, you know. JR, I agree. Strip clubs are, are kind of depressing, so fake. Not that I've been in one, but I'm just saying I agree. It's probably, I would, yeah, right? Uh, what's what are common disagreements that guitar teachers have about teaching? What are common disagreements? Uh, there's many, Brad, but the number one that I hear all the time is this: is that, and I guarantee you, someone will say it right in here um, that their guitar teacher did, their guitar teacher said this to them: is they will say, "Nope, you're not cut out for a guitar." I have taught tens of thousands of lessons, and I've never said that to a student. I have said. I think you're wasting your parents' money because you don't practice. And I've said that over and over again to them before. But bottom line, there's nobody that's not cut out for a guitar, especially if they want to play guitar. But what happens if you have a digit gone? Well, you mean like Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath? Hmm. Yeah. What happens if you're blind? Oh, you mean like Jeff Healy? Okay, well, what, what happens if you don't have any arms, Eric? Well, what, are you talking about the guy from San Diego that plays with his feet? How many excuses do you need? If you don't have a head, I've never seen someone play the guitar without a head. But I guarantee you there's a video out there on YouTube. And once I see it, then you don't have an excuse anymore. So if you, uh, if you don't have an excuse not to play, then you should just play the guitar. But that's number one, Brad, is that uh, I, I hear teachers say that all the time. And it just drives me nuts because they shouldn't be teaching if they don't have the wherewithal and the patience to teach a student how to play. It's ridiculous. It makes me upset because that's somebody's life and that's their love and their dream and they're squashing their dream and that pisses me off. Eric, we need a 100,000 foot overview on how to on set the basics for home recording. So Larry, I could give you a 100,000 foot overview but it's not gonna help you because the devil's in the details, okay? But I'll give you a 100,000 foot overview. You need something to record, like a voice or a guitar or something. You need a cable to go plug into an interface device. An interface device is, I'm plugged into one right now. That's how you guys are hearing me. So I can plug normal analog type cables into something and then it converts it into digital format, which then goes into your computer. Okay, if we're talking computer recording and not old, uh, say, cassette recorders, okay? 
And then you need some sort of software like Logic or Pro Tools or something like that to capture that sound. And specifically, you would want a multi-track recorder, right? A digital audio workstation that will allow you to stack uh, different bits and pieces. Oh, that audio thing, that audio that you're recording needs to be set in record mode. And then when you hit record, it will record it to a track. And then when you record something else, you need to take that other one out of record and then set a new track and start recording on that. And then you just stack those up. That's about as 100,000 foot as I can get, but I know that probably isn't gonna help you too much. So Sam, you may need to ask more a more specific question, you know? Or Larry, I'm sorry, Larry said that. Um, <clears throat> okay. Eric, I finally saw a video of you today with a t-shirt. It's true. It does, it does happen. Lap out loud. Sadly, no tattoos, right? I should have gone with the whole that I'm tatted out, that I'm just madly tatted out and I didn't want to offend anybody. I'm pretty advanced in guitar. just can't finger pick. How do I get better? Great question. Now, friends, listen to this question because I want you to enter. What I want you to do is take whatever you're having an issue with right now and insert it in the word finger pick. I'm pretty advanced in guitar, just can't blank do how do I get better. I want you to insert whatever it is you're having an issue with. Here is how you fix it. Finger picking, sweep arpeggios, scales, doesn't matter. Insert the word there. This is what you do. You step up to your fear, you step up to the thing that's making you uncomfortable, finger picking or whatever, and you practice that, okay? Now that's the logical thing, but there's some people that don't understand that. They say, but I'm not good at it. Well, exactly, you're not good at it because you don't practice it. I suck at Mandarin because I don't practice it ever. I'm not very good at sight reading even though I have a book on it. I'll teach you, I can teach it all day long. I can teach you jazz too. I'm not good at that because I don't practice it, okay? There's certain things I practice, there's certain things I don't. So whatever it is that you're practicing is the thing you're gonna get good at because your brain, and you have to be passionate about it, okay? And you have to be pushing up against your edge. You have to be leaning up against what's uncomfortable for you. Doing those three things will assure that you're going to get better at whatever it is you're trying to get, at, get better at very quickly because there's something called myelin and it's basically a insulation around your synapses in your brain. And you can build that by challenging yourself at whatever it is that you're doing. If you challenge yourself too much, then you just get, get frustrated and stop. You just need to feel a little bit of discomfort whatever, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. So, Nelson, start with the free program. The free program that I have teaches you all about finger picking. YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. It has so many exercises for finger picking, it's not even funny. Okay, you're gonna learn how to finger pick with literally one video and going through those exercises. So start there, start at the first exercise and keep going. There, I think there might be, there's probably 50 exercises, okay? And once you understand that, then I show you, okay, now how you, you can pick these chords, you can add these to chords and everything else. That's what to do. So focus on whatever it is that you suck at, lean into the having difficulty with it, you will build this myelin, myelin that I'm talking about. It's literally, this is just plain old science. They have this in all sorts of journals, uh, peer-reviewed studies. This is how to build myelin, which is the thing that keeps your muscle memory and everything. It's not muscle memory as much as it is memory in your brain about what it is that you're doing. And it builds really strong synapses by building this myelin, okay? Okay. Good. Okay, just my opinion, but anyone who doesn't take advantage of the free course uh, just isn't that interested in learning. It's really free with no strings. Barry, I 100% agree with you. People ask questions all the time and <clears throat> not picking on you, but if you truly are interested, then step up. It's a free program. It doesn't cost you a daggone anything. But, you know, this is my belief. Call it whatever you want, call it God, call it universe. I don't care what you call it, but when you step into a place of responsibility where you say, you know, I'm responsible for my weight, I'm responsible for my job, I'm responsible for my feelings, the way that I think. I know I'm offending people left and right here. Sorry, this is the truth. 
we're all responsible for what it is that we have on ourselves. I can feel people dropping off right now. That's okay. They need it to anyhow. But for those that are strong and they're sticking here, I promise you, you've got to get into this uncomfort level. You've got to do something new. If you're doing the same thing all the time and getting the same results, you got to do something new. That free course is you stepping up saying, I'm going to do something about it. That's one step. Then watching a video might be another step. And then watching the second video, another step. You can't just get the free course and then nothing happens, right? But I agree with you, Barry. <clears throat> There's a lot of folks in the world that want things to happen like that. And it just doesn't. Let me be the first to tell you it does not. Okay? And trust me, I'm a dreamer. Any suggestions on the best app for backing tracks? David. It's a great question. Um... I would say not necessarily an app for backing tracks, but with that being said, there are tons of backing tracks on YouTube. Just search backing tracks or there's some on Spotify. If you're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, we have over 600 original jam tracks that you can't find anywhere else. Yeah. So if you're in there, David, get them there. They're free. Blues, rock, country. I think we may have some jazz, some reggae in there. All sorts of uh, jam tracks, okay? That's where to go. Okay. Uh, great questions. Great questions. Okay. Sometimes my ring finger becomes kind of stiff and hurts while practicing scales. Is this just me? <clears throat> uh, I just, I would just practice more. Uh, it may be a specific medical issue that you're having. You could check with the doctor. But uh, it also, you know, everything that we eat has to do with the way that we feel. So if you're eating crap food, chances are you're feeling, your hands are going to feel like crap. It's just, we are what we eat. We are what we think. All that. All right. But I would check with a doctor if you think it's something severe. Otherwise, it's probably just that you're... You just, you know, getting tr what they call trigger finger. I don't know if it's a real thing. I've heard people talk about it. But can you just suggest uh, some easy, fun melodies to teach my five and eight year old kids? Uh, you know, I don't know what from what country you're from and what your kids like. So I could name a thousand songs and I may not land on one. So just take any song that's a classic song in your country uh, for that age group. Have, you know, Happy Birthday, Mary Had a Little Lamb, uh, the ABCs, right? Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Like, just take basic melodies like that and learn those on the guitar. That's what to do. BJ is saying, thank you for offending. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, I know. People be soft these days, huh? Or some of them are. You know, I don't think anything's changed. I think it's just the softies are... are they got real loud voices, and the, the folks that are strong, they just sit back and watch all the craziness happen. This is why I'm off of social media, with the exception of what I dispel. I don't get on social media. I hate it. I don't, I want to be, I want to control the thoughts that are coming into my brain. Uh, I want to control the, the sight that's going into my eyes and what's going into my ears. It's really important. No participation trophy in UGS. Indeed, Rick, thank you. We don't need participation uh, trophies here. The excuse I had a year ago was that I didn't have a guitar. Beat that. TLAC, right? And whose fault was that, that you didn't have a guitar? I don't know about you, but it's your fault, right? You don't have a guitar because... You're a big boy, big girl, whatever. You can go get a guitar. And you stepped up and you said, yes, and I got it. And you got a guitar. So good for you. Great. Is there a garage band that is available for PC? I don't think garage band is available for PC, but there are other programs. Just search DAW, DAW, for Digital Audio Workstation for PC. DAW for PC is what you want to look up. How to get good and effective practice. Get good and effective practice by doing it a lot, being specific at what you're doing, so being focused, leaning into what is your uncomfortable zone. So you're in your comfort zone, you feel great, not being challenged, you're in the wrong place, friend. Push into where it's uncomfortable. If you're playing scales and you're like, oh, I can play scales like this 
all day long. Great. You're not really helping. You're helping a little bit, but not as much on the same amount of time as if you're pressing. So that's challenging for me right there. So I have to concentrate more on that. When I'm in that zone, then I'm going to have exponential the uh, I'm gonna have an exponential amount of growth compared to just keeping in my comfort zone. If I spend an hour just staying in my comfort zone or an hour doing that, pushing, the results are exponential. So you get your choice. You get to do whatever you want. You can grow faster or grow slower. You get to do whatever you want, which is pretty cool. How's the best way to get my thumb over the top to play the low E string? Peter, get that thumb over the top of the neck. I think what happens a lot of times, Peter, is that people try to get that whole thumb over, and there's no need for that. Uh, Papa and I were, Brett Papa and I were talking about this the other day, is that if you just get that crease on your thumb over the top of the neck, and then pull back a little bit, you'll be able to play that note. So you don't need the whole, the whole hand back there, right? See how I'm doing that? sense. So uh, I have a whole video on that, Peter. Obviously inside the Unstoppable Guitar System in the upper left hand corner, search thumb. If you're on YouTube, search your guitar stage thumb. I think I have a couple videos for that. Uh, so here JR is saying Studio One is a pretty good DAW for PC. Thank you, JR, for posting that. I've been playing for six months every day and went on vacation for 10 days and when I got back it felt I felt way better. Should you take regular breaks, Robert? I have found this to be true somewhat, Robert, but no, I don't suggest it because I, I don't suggest it because I think, uh, <clears throat> I guess I'd have to have some science to really know, to really know the answer to that. But it doesn't make any sense that if you take a break from something, you're gonna get better at it. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, yes, you need a time for the brain to recuperate, but I mean, overnight is gonna do that, you know? So, um, so I'm not subscribing to that. I don't know if that's the correct answer, but that is what my gut is telling me, you know? I have had it though where I practice something and then building that myelin, like we just talked about, and then I go to sleep and the next day, I used to call it the elves. The elves would come out and arrange everything so now I could play better. I know, I'm weird. But, um, but it was probably that my, my brain was building myelin around these synapses, and now when I go to play this thing again, it, it becomes better, quicker, faster. Okay? Okay. So, if I have a guitar, amp, cables, computer, and speakers, you need an interface, then all I need is an audio interface, like the Focusrite Scarlet. Indeed, I've got two of those. We got one in the studio, and then I got another one sitting in a box here that I use for other things. And a DAW app to record, play through computer. Yes, that's what you need. If you have that, you're set. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything else I'm thinking. Is practicing six hours a day too much? No, there are folks that have practiced 18 hours a day for years, so no. There is no such thing as practicing too much. The only time that you would be practicing too much is if you are really striving for mediocrity or sucking at guitar, and now you can't play the guitar without being great. Then you might be like, ugh, I practice too much. But that's the only, that's typically the only time, you know? Okay, Unicorn, uh, Unicorn made Frankenstein is going to sign up for the course. Good, good, definitely. It's free. You should. Um, okay, that's why we love you so much. Thank you, Rick. <clears throat> Unless your amp has a, di a digital interface, and what Walter's saying here is true, some amps have digital interfaces. I'm sure mine does in some way. Well, I know, well, does it? I don't know. I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. It might. It probably does. Some of them do. They have interfaces built in. Just You're going to have to read the instruction manual for it to find out. Trigger finger is when your finger gets stuck when you bend it, because it happens to me from time to time. David, yeah, I feel like I've heard you talk about it before. So it gets stuck when you bend it, huh? 
So I've heard of that before. I've never experienced it. My guess would be that it's a, a supplement deficiency or something that you're eating that is causing that. Um, a lot of people like to blame stuff on, you know, genetics. Ah, I was born with it. Because then you can just fluff it off. It may be the case in this, but I'm telling you, try not to think like that. Because that is a great way to just say, yeah, this is the way I am and this is the way I'll be when I die. And that's a cool way to not ever get beyond anything and to just sit in medi mediocrity. Now, I'm not saying, and I'm to David, I'm not saying that anybody, I'm saying trigger finger, could, I don't know anything about trigger finger. That could be totally hereditary. But my chance, my guess is it's not. Just like 99% of everything else in life, it's not hereditary. It's what you're eating. It's the thoughts you're thinking. Don't believe me on it. Try it. Lean into it, and I promise you, you're going to see the results. You're going to say, Dear Lord, Eric, I see the light. I am so sorry for living in darkness. Okay. Ah, okay. So what kind of AMP sim? Is that software too? Larry, uh, AMP, AMP simulation can be software. Uh, it, well, it's always software. It's always software. In this case, it's software inside of a box with my amplifier here. It's an amp. It amplifies the sound, makes it louder through a speaker, but it's also software inside of a computer that essentially looks like an amp. But it's always software. When people are singing and wearing headphones while recording, what are they listening to? Brad. So what they're listening to is like podcasts or sports or whatever, and it's very um, motivating to them when they sing. Now, what they're listening to, Brad, is they're listening to the track. So just like uh, on some of these live broadcasts, you'll hear a jam track going and then I'm playing, right? Well, the reason I don't need headphones is I've got a PA speaker in front of me here and I can listen to it hitting me right here. Well, when you're recording, you don't want your voice here to be hearing. Basically, this is my microphone right up here. If that's my vocal mic, and I'm singing into it, I don't want the track to also be going into there because now if I need to EQ something, things are getting wonky. So I just want my voice isolated into that microphone. So when you have headphones on, the sound's going into the listener's ear and they're hearing the track so they can sing to that. Usually they're hearing their voice go through the board and then through the, the cams, the headphones as well, right? So they're hearing their voice and the track, whereas the microphone is just hearing their voice. Does that make sense? <clears throat> what would you look up an old Hank, a Hank Senior song and teach it to me? My papa wrote it, and I want to play it now that I'm learning. It's called "Fool About You." Iori is saying, Iori, um, I get so many requests that I just can't get to them all. But my guess would be somebody has taught that song. Search "Fool About You" guitar lesson on YouTube, and I guarantee you, you're gonna find it. Do you recommend Guitar Rig Five? I don't know anything about it other than, uh, I mean, I guess I never, I don't have that. I don't own it, but I've heard great things about it. So it's probably a good setup. What are the most useful scales to learn? Major scale pentatonic. Major scale for walking you through music theory as I teach in the free program. You've got to know the major scale. The pentatonic is great for... Um, for improvisation because it's so quick you can play it in any key major minor doesn't matter same thing with major scale but in a major minor key you could use either uh, if you know how to use it right the way i teach then uh, but those are the two scales that i would use the most pentatonic or i should say major and then pentatonic or the blue scale because the blue scale you have one other note there you got the blue note and that's helpful uh, for for making those bits and pieces sound cool you know um Oh, okay, so JR, yeah, so he's, JR's got a Kemper and he's saying it can go direct into my interface. Yes. Wow, these questions are going really quickly and I can't seem to get to them all. That's good, that's a good thing. We got a lot of kids in the house here. Uh, make sure you're leaving those questions, question marks, because I'm skipping anything that doesn't have one. Okay. It's usually a tendon issue, not hereditary. I had to get an injection from orthopedist to correct it. Barry, thank you for that. Uh, a good song to practice finger picking, picking is Dust in the Wind. And I have lessons for Dust in the Wind. Also, uh, I think it's called I Want to Marry You by... Yeah. Or Will You Marry Me or something. Or I Want to Marry You by... Um, I forgot the name of that group. But nonetheless, I've got videos on it. 
If you search your guitar stage finger picking, I got tons of videos on on that sort of thing. Okay, any advice for, for playing and singing at the same time? Matt, I have a video on YouTube. Search your guitar stage playing and singing. I have a whole series inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I just bought a cheap guitar act, uh, a cheap first act guitar to take with me everywhere so I can practice whenever I get a chance. I usually play better guitars. Is it bad to use a lesser guitar for this? Nope, nothing wrong with that. Uh, trigger finger is no excuse, just inconvenient. I think it may be related to magnesium or potassium deficiency. <clears throat> I agree, David. No, I'm not saying it's an excuse. So please hear me. Hear me. I'm not saying it's an excuse. Definitely, people have issues. Uh, <clears throat> I had arthritis. I have five deformed fingers. But people will say all the time, well, my grandfather had arthritis, and my grandfather before him had arthritis. Yeah, and they were all eating like shit. Okay? Sorry. It's true. Okay? Um, the reason I had arthritis, guess what? It went away. I'm like twice the age and my arthritis went away. Magically, did my DNA change? It probably did because I'm eating a lot better. I'm thinking a lot better. I'm doing things to improve my health. So it's going to get better. <clears throat> I know that annoys people because they feel like, well, now I've got to change. But you don't have to. You can simply do whatever it is that you keep doing and just be happy with arthritis or be happy with mental illness or be happy with all these things. It's okay. Or you can change things and change your destiny. It's just, it's just science. It's not, I didn't invent this stuff. I'm just the messenger, right? But what do they do? They shoot the messenger. Um, so David, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's um, an excuse indeed. Okay. When I had arthritis, it was so, it hurt so bad to play guitar and I was so frustrated, but no one was telling me, Hey, Eric, stop eating, stop drinking milk, stop eating meat, stop eating Cheerios and all these other crap foods, stop doing it, eat some vegetables. But once I got the knowledge and I started doing that stuff, started juicing and everything else, all my, all these ailments went away. I can't tell you how many things went away. So many different things. It's not magic. It's just science. Can someone explain uh, what to do with giveaway two? Let's talk about it. Lovely Teresa one. Uh, giveaway two is going to go like this. We have a post that's on Instagram. It looks a little bit like this, okay? There's four things you need to do. You gotta be following. Surely you know how to do that, right? You gotta follow on Instagram. If not, there's tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. You gotta follow Instagram. You gotta like it. So the way you like it is you can see that little red heart. You touch that heart. Boom, you liked it. You're halfway there. Uh, number three, you need to comment. See right next to the heart there, there's that little quote thing right? That little bubble. Click that. Then you can comment. Say something like, Eric, you have the most magnificent hair. I love you. Okay. Number four, you want to click on that little paper airplane. See the one that circled with the arrow? That one. Click on that. What happens next, Eric? I'm glad you asked. You're going to go to this page, this page, and you see that good looking guy there. That's Mike. He's our design guy. You want to click on that, except it won't be Mike's face. It'll be your face or your avatar. You're going to click on that. What happens next? Bam! This is what happens next. At the bottom, at the lower bit there that circle with an the arrow, these won't be circled with arrows, by the way. It'll just be your face. You need to look out for it. You're going to click on that and that will share the story. So four things. Let's talk about it. You need to follow the Instagram. You need to like it. You need to comment. You need to share. Four things. If you get up with, if you do three or two, you're going to be like, man, there's more things I need to do. Just come up with four things and all those buttons along with following the page is going to get it. Hit all three of those buttons and on follow the page, you'll get it. Okay. Now, what does that get you? Well, we're going to pick a winner just like we did this morning. I'm going to announce it tomorrow on Instagram stories. That's by hitting my icon instead of just following the feed. Hit the Instagram, hit, hit my icon and then you'll see my stories and I will announce the winner there. We did it this morning. Okay. And this, we're going to pick another winner. Okay. Um, a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365 plus these books. If you want them signed, I'll sign them. Otherwise, you're going to win Guitar Mastery Simplified, Ukulele Mastery Simplified. If you can play a guitar, you can play ukulele. That's right. Go run out and get a ukulele. Get this book as well because you can play two instruments now. Three, the bass. Bass is the bottom four strings of the guitar down an octave. Wow. How about that? Eric just taught me how to play ukulele and bass in one lesson. I did. And then how to read music. Those three books are going to go out as well to that winner. Okay? Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's get just a, a couple more. Eat a carrot. 
That's right. Eat a carrot. Indeed. Eric, do you have any advice on memorizing all the positions of the major scale? Are there any tricks or hints you can give me? Rusty, no. It's just a matter of rote repetition. It, after doing it for a while, you're going to see those patterns appear in your head. So just do it. Just work on them, and I promise you, uh, you're going to understand this, okay? Phrygian mode works best with the seventh chord. Have you ever tried it? The Phrygian. i got to think about this for a second. So uh, Ionian, uh, Dorian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Phrygian. I think that's Phrygian. Let me think here. Hold on. I think that's Phrygian. No, that can't be. Phrygian's minor, I'm pretty sure. You know, I, I know my modes. I don't teach them all the time, so I'm, I'm rusty on them. But let me think Let me think here. That's Locrian, Locrian, Lydian, Aeolian. Yeah, I was right. I was right there. So this is Dorian, Lydian, Mixolydian. I'm pretty sure that this would be... So yeah, that should work over a seventh chord. But actually, yeah, yeah, it should work over. Yeah. So have I used that before? No, I haven't. If it's a you know if it's a major or minor seventh chord, I use that one. But yeah, could work indeed. B twelve for carpal tunnel and arthritis. Indeed. B12. I take I take B12 all the time. How can I catch perfect pitch? You can't. You can't catch perfect pitch. You can work on it, and my understanding is if you're a child, you might be able to develop it. But many people are born with it, and it's discovered, you know, later on. Uh, but you can't catch it. It's not like a cold. Be nice. If that were if it were that easy, but then it wouldn't be worth anything because everybody would have it, right? Any suggestions on picking te techniques? Yeah, do it. Pick. If you're not picking, you're not getting better at it. So you're gonna have to get more specific. Uh, watch the free series, yourguitarstage.com/slash/30. I use a go-to acoustic, then back erect guitar. Erect guitar. So I could play the song better. Is that good? Well, first we're going to have to talk about your erectile guitar here that we're that you're talking about, Michael, because I don't know anything about that. Uh, I, let me get this right. So I use an acoustic and then go back to, I'm thinking you're saying electric guitar, so I could play the song better. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. That works, you know. Uh, yes, Larry, thank you for denoting that. By the way, if you're doing the whole Instagram thing, if you want to win this, don't forget to do that. I'll remind you because we're going to go here in just a moment. But don't forget that the paper airplane icon only appears on the phone, not on the computer. Okay. Okay. I am absolutely certain you are right, Eric. My diet sucks. You inspire me to be better. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, David. I know things like, listen, friends, I don't mean to be, uh, to be harsh. But just like with my kid, when my kid is getting ready to stick his finger into the socket and I go, don't do that, and I yell at him and then he cries, I'm not trying to make him cry. I'm trying to put the fear of God into him so he doesn't stick his finger into a socket like I did when I was a kid. Because, man, I can still remember how that feels. It feels terrible, okay? So uh, I tell you these things, and I wouldn't say anything that I didn't know was true. I'm not one of these people that just throw stuff out there. I only say things that I've tested myself and that I know without a shadow of a doubt are true. That's why sometimes I'll say, man, I don't have the authority to answer that question. I don't know. So I only tell you things that I know without a shadow of a doubt are true, okay? Or at least that I'm 99.9% .9 sure about that are true, okay? I might, I might share that. I say, I say them to help you. Sometimes they have to do with guitar. Sometimes they don't. But thank you for saying that, David. Um, Eric, how long do you not eat meat? And drink. Can you tell us how you went to a healthy journey? Because in my path, I know it's a topic of uh, just speak for two minutes about healthy habits. Okay, I'll tell you really quickly. So um, went to college. Uh, so so I ate really healthy growing up. My mom uh, ate. We ate very healthy. We still had animal products in our in our diet. I'm not saying you can't have animal products in your diet. I have both of. Uh, reasons. I have two reasons for doing it. One is because I, I love animals, but then the other reason is for health. So 
if you hate animals and you want to still eat animals, then you can do that. Um, but um, there's health reasons why you'd want to do it too. So if you're just like, I just care about me, there's reasons why not to eat animal products. That said, I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm just saying for me, okay? Take it, take it with what you take it with a grain of salt if you want. So we ate he very healthy growing up, but still it wasn't as healthy as it could be. We were eating lots of organic stuff. Everything was organic back then, pretty much. Uh, but when, when I went to college, I was like, to hell with that, man. I'm eating this and that and the other thing. And I was eating whatever the cafeteria served, eating lots of it, okay? And, uh, and all of a sudden, my knuckles, like you can, if you can zoom up on this, Chris, um, they can see, let's put my hand, well, like right here. You can see that like, um, well, we'll do it over here. See how this knuckle is bent? See how this knuckle is bent? I'm not doing that purposely. I physically cannot bend my knuckle. It's, it's bent. It's not straight, okay? Same thing with this one. Same thing with my thumb. I have other fingers. Five of my fingers in total are like this, okay? I had arthritis severely to where it messed up my, my joints to such a degree that I have difficulty playing classical guitar. I'd have to have surgery to have it fixed because there are huge... They're, they're deformed. So with that being said... Uh, freshman year in college, first semester, uh, maybe the second semester, something like that, I started living on my own, was not eating crappy cafeteria food anymore, and I went down the rabbit hole of eating good, uh, juicing food, buying organic, um, cutting out cutting out lots of, in fact, I, I think I went vegan back then for about a year, okay? Then, uh, bad habits, girlfriends, hanging out with other people, what have you, I started getting uh, bad um, I started getting bad habits, okay? And then what happened was my hands started getting bad again, started hurting really, really super bad. So I said, no more of this. And I got serious. Many, many years later, uh, I went, I went totally vegan, okay? And by doing that, what happened was all the arthritis stopped, all the inflammation stopped, everything absolutely stopped, okay? For me, if it works for you, great. So what I, what I would advise you to do is make one little step. I don't care what it is, working out, uh, drinking water, something. Do something that you know is correct for your health and go down the rabbit hole, f follow up with some guys that are going to, some guys and gals that are actually going to help you with this sort of thing, okay? Make sense? Okay, excellent. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's I think that's where we're going to stop it. We're going to stop it right there because uh, it's time to go. And I've gone long, and the guys need to eat. Uh, for all those that donated money, thank you so much. Um, so kind. The questions were on fire today, Facebook and YouTube friends. I only mean good things for you. I'm sorry that we got off on a little bit of a tangent today. If you want guitar things from me, I have tons of guitar things, okay? Uh, the free course, please take advantage of that. YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. The link for that's in the description of this video. Okay, it's also right here. Go there. Please take advantage of this. It's really, really important so that you can get better at the guitar. Okay? Otherwise, don't. Um, Instagram, you know what to do. Go to Instagram. Do it right now. There's four things you need to do. Follow, like, comment, and share on your Instagram stories. If you want a chance to win nearly $600 worth of goodies, rewind this and watch where I talk about it at the beginning of the broadcast a couple other times in there too. Okay, I don't want to do it a last time here and wear people out. You know what to do. Love you guys. I only mean the best for you. Please let me know how I can help you. I'm out of here. See you.